Let's see if you can hear us there. There he is. Can you hear me, Mr. Malley? I can absolutely hear you. How are you, <laughs> sir? What is up, brother? Long time no see, huh? Long time no see. I was just thinking about this, by the way. Like, by the way, thank you again for having me on the show, which is amazing. I love when you do this. I remember last time when you did a 24-hour string, like that was amazing as well. But I was thinking, like, I think we've known each other for 12 or 13 years, if not longer. Oh, yeah. I think we go back to ooh, at least like 2006, 2004 or 5, 15, 16 years back. So, yeah. I, back, one of the yeah. things I... One 15. of the things I always respect about people is people who are just consistent. You know, lots of people change careers and do different things. You've always been consistent over the years. So I'd love to be able to catch up with you and we run to each other at conferences. Like you've just been consistently just rocking and rolling versus changing every year and a half, which is great. To see. <laughs> yeah, some people are forced to change. I think the social media and the marketing, you know, we've always done marketing and done that well for the most part, but then taking a much more active approach in the social media podcasting space, but still, the note and real estate space is kind of our thing. And this is kind of our uh, B plan, I guess you'd say, when we, where things are rocking, aren't rocking and rolling the other way around. So you've done an amazing job, though, too, with block, uh, Black Box Media and just absolutely killing it. You know, you took a, a bad situation that a lot of people went through in 2008, 9, and 10 <laughs> and really did an amazing job pivoting. And so I and, – and you have just been a, a craft. I mean – in your, I like to say from the the the, uh, the birdhouse where you're at, because you've got a bird's eye view of downtown Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to leave. You catch everything that's going on. You got tacos delivered to your front door if you need to, and, and just doing a big stuff. So, Kurt, for those that don't know how awesome you are, why don't you take a second here and, and brag on yourself and kind of what your focus <laughs> is and and how you're really doing and, and not only doing amazing things for yourself but other entrepreneurs out there as well through social media and other things. Yeah, absolutely. Really, again, appreciate being on the show again. So, my name's Kurt Molly. I'm also I'm located here in Austin, Texas, as well. I have a place downtown that overlooks the city. It's been a place I've always dreamed of, um, and that's what social media has really helped me with. So, over the last ten plus years, I've run a lot of Facebook ads uh, consistently for ten years. We spent millions of dollars online. We worked with people like the San Antonio Spurs, Mike Dillard, uh, let's see, or Ryan Dice. We've worked with Click Funnels. We've worked with U.S. presidential candidates. We've worked in something like 40 some different niches, small, medium, large businesses. So I have a full service ad agency. Uh, our employees are now in Nebraska. We have 15 employees there. I also train and teach agency owners. We have digital products. We show people how to run Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads. And I just love this online thing where at the end of the day, we can build relationships over the social medias. I love to talk about video and building relationships through video. And like, Scott, when you and I met, the way that you and I met was like literally hotel rooms, right? It was like, hey, let's go to a meetup in a hotel room. Hey, let's talk about real estate here. Like it was just a lot of, we didn't do any of this stuff back then at no. all. <laughs> Zilch, zero. The, most of the stuff that we're doing now wasn't even around then. That's the crazy stuff, you know? Not even close. Not at all. Now you've got, what's the, you, I know what it is, but people are like, okay, what's this belt thing? What are you oh, doing? Oh, this thing about? right here? Yes, there this? we go. Da, da, da. Hang on a second. <laughs> we need to have a. So by the way, for any of you who are in social media, I found out that, I don't know if you know this, but like behind Scott, you can tell that there is a Zoom background. Well, I like to say low paycheck or low paycheck, low tech, high paycheck. So I kind of also realized that, hey, Check this out. You can just take a screenshot of a PowerPoint and all of a sudden, wow, look, you have, you can be a TV caster. So I've been filming a ton of videos of how people are leaving money on the table. This is literally just a screenshot from PowerPoint. Cause I don't even know how like any of the other creatives like Canva or any of that stuff works. So uh, essentially to kind of go into the story, what we ended up doing is in February of 2019, there were 30 or uh, 40 different media buyers that were all asked to come into Baltimore. And we essentially all just competed for who had one of the best strategies in the room. And there was about a hundred people there total watching us, whatnot. And essentially everything that I'll talk about here is since I teach it, I have it training and documented. And essentially at the end of the two day event, everyone voted for um, uh, basically one of the most unique strategies that was efficient and it was just kind of it gave overall support where my other peers said, man, hands down, yes, run this. So this is like Russell Brunson's um, a media buyer, people from Purple Mattress, people from Agora. There are some pretty big heavyweights in the room. And based on some of the ideas that I would love to share, 
I won this belt that I now carry around with me anywhere I travel in the world. I'm a grown man with a belt. Always wanted one. Just too <laughs> fat to earn one. Now, I don't have to get a broken note. By the way, I carry the, I carry the belt in the airport. I don't know why I'm pointing to it because it's right behind me and that's a screen anyway. But I carry the belt and people ask me because that's I'm a marketer, right? You got to ask. People are like, what is that? And I'm like, death cage match championship <laughs> coming back from a funeral. <laughs> Only the bartenders, because of the smart ones for whatever reason, the bartenders look at me and they're like, too fat, no broken nose, no cauliflower ear. You're lying. What is it? All right. Well, my friends at work gave it to me for being in marketing and stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It, but it's a, it's a, a branding piece, your Facebook profile as you're carrying it. And it's, it's such a beautiful thing. It's like the traveling gnome, but the traveling belt, wherever you go, you know? Well, essentially what ends up happening is, is, basi is basically this, is for the last 10 years, I like to talk about complicated stuff. So people always talk about, well, how do you make something brandable? Well, I won this belt and we started to think about literally two and a half weeks later, what about if we created an acronym? We're just in four easy letters, belief, like how do we get people to believe, just like if we're going to meet each other for the first time, how do we establish a belief? I don't need a lead or a sale right away. I just need to align with you. Yeah. And then how do we engage? How do we build a lead? And then how do we transact? Well, if I take all the complicated stuff, I love to talk about it and make it fun, easy with something like the belt and make easy processes. Now people take complicated processes and they start to implement. We start to have a whole heck of a lot of fun. And that's I love to see people just have great success. I mean, that's why I want to do this. That's why I like to be here. Love to talk about the belt, but it's to help a lot of people be able to implement and see some success. Exactly. Now you've got your method, you got your slides or your, your background you want to dive into and share with everybody here for you today. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll actually make this, I'll show this in uh, in two parts very quickly and, you know, stop me along the way. And by the way, I have free resources and Scott, like you said, is I have a link set up for you that has free resources. So anything I say that maybe I may be talking too fast or you didn't understand, I have lots of free training that you can dive into. We have that all set up too. So let me go ahead and pull up this screen right here. By the way, I'm still learning this whole TV thing by because I'll be pointing this way a couple of times, but I mean to go over here and then sometimes your finger will disappear. It's kind of yeah. nice, right? I know it's kind of hard to see unless you blow up your screen overall. But essentially, there's just really four key components here that I want you to remember. And it's a belt acronym. So it's the belief. So what I do a lot of times is I run a lot of paid traffic on Facebook. So what I'm looking to do is when I talk to a cold audience, essentially what I'll do, I like to run a lot of video views. So for example, after this entire event's over, if I was in Scott's shoes, I would take our interview, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes, I don't care how long it is. And what I do is I would run that interview to a cold market. So if I was to interview Scott, I would take our interview, our video interview here. Now I'd run that to a cold market. Now what's going to happen is I use this thing called the dollar a day strategy. I'll get into in just a little bit. I learned this from a good friend, Dennis Yu. And essentially what this is, if I take a video like this, that's 20 or 30 minutes and I run it to a cold audience, someone who does not know me, and I only spend a dollar a day for, the, for that audience, for this video, well, I can choose 20 different audiences. So I can choose lots of different audiences to spend more money, but here's the deal. Facebook will actually find the right person at the right time that I am not joking. They will scroll through their Facebook feed. I don't know how I found you and Scott, but I tripped upon one of your videos and I don't know why, but I ended up watching for a full half an hour. So Scott, I think back to our real estate days back in the hotel room. Uh, and by the way, when I say that, I always want to preface the hotel ballroom. I don't want that to sound weird whatsoever, right? Uh, back in our days, though, as I start doing the math of, do I want website clicks to my website for a dollar and they may spend there for 30 seconds? Or would I spend a dollar to have somebody join me in a hotel ballroom to watch me for 30 minutes? I mean, that's, I don't understand real estate notes, but if I watch for 30 minutes, I bet you'd give me a really good explanation. So that helps me pre-qualify people at first. Well, then what I do, and again, I'll, show, I'll give you the exact process here in a moment. And then the next thing that we're going to do is engage. All I want to do is just build the relationship, like from the hotel ballroom. I want to ask you a couple of questions. And I like to say, I like to run ethical propaganda. So I like to show people a lot of different content, just like in real life, how we get to know each other. Now, from there, that's where I ask people to become a lead. Hey, you've seen some of my content. You've seen some of the stuff I've done. Now, this can work for either being coaching, consultant, e-commerce, works great for local businesses, the whole gamut. Because essentially, we're just building a relationship. Then we're asking people, hey, you may have a problem. Would you like to become a lead? And then from there, once they become a lead, 
it all comes down to transact. So essentially the way that this works, I'll just give it to you step by step. We've done this for years. So you can see this, it's basically this. If you're, we call it the golden ad process. As long as you're just posting on a regular basis, you uh, build some reach and relevancy. So like on Facebook, I don't look for a lot of organic reach, but Facebook will tell me if I'm posting, which has the most reach. That means it's the most relevant in Facebook's eyes. So for posting content on a regular basis, what we do is twice a week, we'll add a dollar a day to these posts to target to everyone who's been to our websites, watched our videos. We call it a hot 28, a digital newspaper. So anybody who goes to our website now starts seeing relevant posts on a very relevant basis. So we take the most relevant post that people really like, we turn it into an ad, and now all of a sudden we have a social post that's now an ad that we start to run to people who know, like, and trust us. And we start to test it if that works. If we have an ad that people buy from, they know, like, and trust us, that's something that we can now run to a cold market who doesn't know us because it's something that it's proven. So I like to build a relationship, build a rapport, and I'm happy to answer any questions on this. But again, we can get someone to watch a video like this for a dollar, a half an hour for a dollar. Now they trip upon, let's just say, another video of Scott where there's a testimonial of someone talking about Scott for five minutes. There's another dollar and then another, let's just say 50 cents for another testimonial. So you see three or four exposures overall, it's over an hour and a half from all these testimonials. I'd pay a buck 50 to listen to my story and four other people talk about me. So. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful thing. Now on your social media posts, when you post how long do you let the organic kind of play a day, 48 hours before you say, okay, you let Google tell you, or I'm, Facebook tell you what's kind of working? I'm really kind of lazy. So a lot of the answers I'm going to give you should be highly duplicatable. I like to tell people, I don't know if you know this, uh, I don't know if you ever heard this. I have a PhD in marketing. It's a public high school diploma. So I keep <laughs> this very, very simple, right? So what I do is I look at this at twice a week. So all the posts that I made the first through the seventh, you know, when I join on that, or when I join, when I get back online on that Monday, let's just say January the 10th, I'm going to see what happened that last week. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what works for whatever reason. I'm going to look through all those posts. I'm going to find the two posts that are the most relevant. I don't even care if they're like, for example, let's just say that you did a podcast with Joe Polish. It has nothing to do with your website, but that was the most popular post. Turn your news feed or their news feed into propaganda that they want to see. Meaning you take all this different type of content, let it run for a dollar a day. Facebook will literally find the right person at the right time who will be like, you know, Scott, I watched this one video with you and Kurt, and then I saw this testimonial, and then I saw this thing with Joe Polish that I think you did like eight months ago. It doesn't even go to your site, but now you have that third-party credibility where I kind of let Facebook figure it out, look over my shoulder a week later, and then run it for a dollar a day, and I just, I have 50 posts running at a dollar a day that seem to find the right person at the exact right time. Mm, I love it. It is such a simple strategy too. And for those that don't have a, what kind of account do they need? They need a personal or they need a business account to really be able to track it. So here's the way that I use it. Great question. So for on my personal side is I'm going to get a lot of reach on my personal side, but only for a short amount of time, you know, 24 to 48 hours. So if I have an announcement, if I want to make a joke, I'm going to do it on my personal page. This is just me. This is what I've learned as a marketer for 10 years that I've won a belt. Sometimes I'll say something controversial, not to put people in certain classes, but sometimes I'll say something because, well, people like Rush Limbaugh, not endorsing him whatsoever, or some of the other shock jocks, they say things really for ratings. And I'm not saying that I say, yes, sometimes I do say things for rating. It doesn't offend people. Sometimes people get riled up, but that causes a lot of attention. So the attention that I want to seek to have people talk about me on social circles, personal page. Something that I want to run for two or three weeks for ongoing propaganda, business page. So business page and running ads. So again, you may be on a radio show with Joe Polish. I want to tell all my friends, so I'm going to post about that. I may make a short little video and I want to make sure it's on my personal page, but that's going to, no one's going to remember that in a week, but I'm going to run that as a dollar a day for my middle of funnel. So what's going to happen is anybody who trips upon my website or watches my videos, they're going to trip upon these other podcasts or testimonials. And they literally do. They feel like they've tripped upon your information. Then it's, Scott, I thought you only did social media. You do notes. You do real estate notes. I've always been interested in that. And 
kicks off the whole other conversation to go on forward. Mm. Where do you see the biggest bang for the buck in your dollar a day strategy as far as is it the first seven days or you keep it running for 365 days a year, 90 days? Where, where do you see the biggest impact for people? Because I'm sure people are like a dollar a day. Okay, I can do that $365 for one video. How many do I need to have to have the biggest impact? And there's an answer to it, I know, right? So essentially what I do is this. So I want you to think, I'm going to give you a couple of different labels. This is some brain science. So if we label things, we can talk about them very clearly, right? So top of funnel, just to be clear, very top, cold audience. They don't know who I am whatsoever, right? They don't know who you are, whatever. Brand new person. Middle of funnel. Middle of funnel is someone who has seen you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this for beginners to intermediate. Middle of funnel, I'm going to call the hot 28. I want you, When I say the words hot 28, I want you to think digital newspaper. So Hot 28 means if they have gone to my website, if they have watched a video, if they have done, there's all these different ways to retarget. I can show you how to set this up for free, but you take all the different ways to retarget, set it for 28 days. It's like a full calendar. That's what Facebook tracks it. And I'm going to take all these different segmenting retargets and I'm going to put it in together like a bowl of mashed potatoes. So I don't care if you watch a video. I don't care if you go to my website. I don't care if you look at my fan page, right? Like, on, I don't care if you like my, I don't care what you do you're going to get caught up in this hot 28. So what's going to happen is, is your digital newspaper. So if I'm on a podcast, I'm going to run this for a dollar a day. Anything that I'm doing, I'm running for a dollar a day. And I'm just going to keep stacking it because every single day, Facebook's going to find just a couple of people who are going to find the right article at the exact right time. So what's going to happen is, is my hot 28 is turning into a digital newspaper. So I want you to imagine this. The USA Today is a newspaper. Many people know of. The thing is, this is what so many marketers screw up on. So many people have a USA Today newspaper, Facebook, and the USA Today newspaper has sections and advertisements. Now, the thing is, is if the advertisements don't work in the USA Today newspaper, the USA Today newspaper does not stop publishing for a week to figure out their ads. Mm -hmm. They're always publishing and they're changing out new ads. So if you're running lots of content for a dollar a day to this hot 28 middle of funnel, People are always seeing different things about you. Maybe it's about you being on a social media or a podcast or you're doing something else. You don't even have to be selling something. So what ends up happening is, is this. You could have 5, 10, 15, 20. Let it run until it's no longer vi viable. But I actually have 50 different pieces of content running for a dollar a day. And the perception on the other side is, Kurt, you are everywhere. You are training on the important topics that like me. And here's the big thing. If you run one ad for $50 a day, people see, buy my shiny stuff, buy my shiny stuff. <laughs> Scott, did you see my shiny stuff? Do you want 10% off my shiny stuff? The difference with me, I may spend $50 a day, but I'm spending a dollar a day on 50 different posts. Mm -hmm. So Facebook knows the exact newspaper feed that Scott wants to see of my content, not buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It is Kurt's talking about social media. Kurt's talking about a Facebook Live. Kurt's talking about Facebook Live and real estate. All of that applies to you. And you feel that, again, you're seeing that digital newspaper. So let that stuff run. And then, by the way, here's the other secret, that hot 28. That's where you test all your offers and leads. Because they've seen the testimonials. They've seen the podcast. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So when it comes time to start running ads and testing an offer, test it to everyone who's in that middle of funnel hot 28. Because you can't go wrong with the right people. And if that doesn't work selling it to your friends, you know it's a horrible offer. Don't test it to a cold market and waste your money. So run <laughs> that, as much content as possible. That's awesome because so many people will jump on. And I know I've made this excuse. I'm going to do a video that's promoting my workshop. And I'm going to drive traffic, try to get people to stop into my workshop because I'm going to share the same video and, and put 30 bucks or 50 bucks a day into that one video to go out there, but not be advertising other things. And what you just said is like, well, they're, people have seen your stuff, they're tired of they're either gonna buy, they're not gonna buy the first thing. You didn't give them anything else of value to look at, right? So let me, give you, let me give you three big tips here, especially with video. So let's just say that you're promoting an upcoming summit, right? The first thing that I would probably do is uh, I would have some of my older interviews that are 10 or 15 minutes long, and I would run those to a cold market. So I know if someone's going to watch 10 minutes, they're probably going to be interested in the content. And if someone watches 10 minutes, it's usually about half the price than it is even to get to your website. So do I want to tell everybody to go to my website about the summit or do I want people to watch a bunch of interviews to have them pre-qualified? I like having longer interviews to the cold market. 
Now, let's just say you've been advertising for a month before your summit. Let's just say now it's a couple of days before the summit. It is time to register and make sure you show up. What I loved, oh, sorry, one important tip. When you run videos longer than 10 minutes, big tip, only run them very specifically in the Facebook news feed and Facebook videos. Those are the only two placements I want you to run videos that are longer than two minutes. So two and two, I just made that up, whatever. But yeah. any videos that are longer than two minutes, only run it in Facebook news feed and Facebook video. Facebook will actually suggest it. Running it anywhere else, people won't watch it. That's not the way the algorithm works. So if you want someone to watch your 30 minute video for 20 cents, they must be run in Facebook news feed or Facebook video. You'll see those two placements, check them both. Now, Scott, my next favorite one. It's time to promote your summit. You're ready to come on the summit and you wanna make sure that people register. One of my favorite things to do is to create a 15 second video. I create a 15 second video and I run it very specifically in a placement called in stream. This is in stream on mobile and news feed only, not the audience network. Hold the rhyme and reason there. But if you create a 15 second video that says, hey, don't forget my summit's coming up tomorrow and you run it in stream, what that means is someone's gonna watch a video on Facebook, right? It's gonna come to one of those climax moments and all of a sudden it's gonna say ad running. It's gonna be your ad. For 15 seconds, it will cost one to two cents to have someone watch that notification. Now, they're not gonna click on the ad, but everyone's gonna know that Scott Summit's coming up. So you wanna build rapport with people at the top. You make an announcement with like that 15 second video that says, hey, this is coming up, this is coming up. And then what happens as soon as they watch that video for 15 seconds, they see all this dollar a day content. So they see Scott all over. They're like, oh my goodness, he does a summit, he does his real estate, he does this. And then that's where you start to sell the summit and get everybody inside of the summit. So it's a quick way to get a lot of attention top of funnel and a lot of attention, those 15 second videos, middle of funnel. Oh my goodness, people are missing out on how cheap those commercials are. Yeah, that's, uh, I love that. Now, hopefully you guys are writing this stuff down. I did have a question from somebody on the live stream asking, can you explain a cold audience? For oh, absolutely, absolutely. So what a lot of people do is they start setting up an audience with Facebook and they'll start to target, let's just say, they target people who like Tony Robbins, right? Or Tony Robbins fans. Well, what happens is a lot of people get really confused in marketing and I'm fascinated with brain science and labeling. So a lot of people say, well, I just wanna run ads to Tony Robbins. We'll run ads to Tony Robbins who? People who have never ever seen you before. Like if we're gonna go, if Scott and I are gonna go to a networking event, we're gonna act very differently if no one ever knows us versus us coming in and clowning around like we own the place because we know everybody who's there. So top of funnel is, a cold audience who's never seen you before. And what a lot of marketers do is they really do like what Scott and I know we have been in the same room when this has happened. And I'm trying to find an example here. Oh, this, this is perfect, right? Scott and I have been in real estate clubs together where the person has the lanyard on and they come up and they go, hi, my name's John. I sell house insurance. Let me tell you the 12 reasons why I need house insurance. You should buy my stuff. Did you, Scott, did you buy my stuff? Did you? Hey, you have a podcast. Can I be on that to sell your stuff? And you're like, I mean, I don't even know who you are. Why would I reckon? Like, I don't, no. So what we like to do is in a cold audience is we like to build that relationship first where so many people just want to run ads and say, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. We want to introduce ourselves to a cold audience. So we want you to understand that it's a cold relationship. Let's warm it up before we start to sell our shiny stuff. Mm. I love it. That's, that makes a lot of sense. And that's the same thing. You can put it to your cold audience by geography, by, ge by uh, age group, income levels, uh, location, interests, uh, you know, passions, all sorts of keywords that identify those people to identify yourself. When you're looking at that narrowing down that audience, are there any specific number of like interests or keywords that you like to target that you found that have worked well, or it's it, not too small an audience, but also a big enough audience for you guys to, to market to? I'll tell you this. This dollar a day has just really just done amazing things for us. So here's what I do is I want to sit down and I want to kind of really, so the difference between good marketing and horrible marketing is research. That's it, right? A lot of people are like, oh, who will buy my product? Everyone. No, that's not necessarily true. Not everybody has money and blah, blah, blah. No, everyone. Sure, you can advertise to literally this whole pool of people and you just kind of like you're fishing in the ocean for like, you just, you just never outspend it. So the other thing is, is what happens is, is a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll try to outsmart Facebook. Cause I don't know if you know this, us silly humans, like there's 
there's there's thousands of people that work at this billion dollar company that are scientists, brain scientists, algorithm things I don't even know the names of that are and these people are like, hey, we're gonna figure it out on our own. No, remember, I have a PhD, so let's keep this really simple, right? <laughs> so what happens is, is many times people want to outsmart Facebook and they want to create these really small audiences and they want to create these really great hooks and these like red ads with this great hook and a small audience. So they get a lot of people, here's a big misnomer, get a lot of people to click on the ad. They want a really high click-through rate. Actually, we're not really looking for a high click-through rate. Facebook shows that people can actually see over and over and over and not necessarily buy right away from clicks. So what we're looking to do is at the end of the day is we're looking to build that relationship first. What's the lowest cost way that we can build that overall relationship? I love to be able to do that overall with videos. When you compare that cost with a click to your website, many times we can build out a relationship here through video, through engagement, and then really just kind of send, and I'm looking at the time right here and I don't want to overrun anybody's time. But the biggest thing is, is what we're doing right here. Like the reason that you had me on here, let's build a relationship, start off your ads that way. And you'll be surprised when people start to become loyal buyers and you're not having to worry about people just clicking on all of your ads until they're by. So to answer your question specifically, I got to scratch with the time. I apologize. A lot of people will try to focus on smaller audiences. I like to focus on audiences that are over a million plus. If you're local, you can't do that. So, you know, just do what you can locally, but the dollar a day will help you find the right person at the right time, regardless if you have a huge audience or a small audience. The biggest tip I'll give you here is really research your avatar. So Scott, if I was advertising your business, I know that I would want to real, I would want to figure out, okay, uh, one of my, somebody that we know, um, uh, Phil, he originally said this, and I'll never forget this. Every single day, someone new wakes up and says, I want to be a real estate investor. So there's all these books that people write and they say, go to your real estate club. So I'm going to start targeting real estate investor books. I'm going to target real estate investor clubs. I'm also going to start targeting people who are interested in social media and maybe real estate diversification. And, and I'm going to look up these other words. Now I may get a hundred thousand people in Austin and that's probably a 10th of Austin. That's fine. Cause the dollar a day strategy is going to find that right person at the right time. So make the audiences a little bit bigger, not necessarily smaller, run more content and run it at a lower spend. So Facebook will find that right person at the right time. Mm, I love it. Kurt, we could go on for hours of this. I need to have you back on our Wednesday night podcast for marketing and monetization, but uh, what's the best way for those that are on here today to, to follow up with you, connect with you? Cause you're just a, a wealth of information and I love what you do. I love how you teach. There you go. The belt dot live slash what? Social media. Social media. Okay. Yep. yep. Belt dot live social media. I was just about ready to make the slide with the forward slash social media. And right before the bell stroke, well, that happened. So you go to the belt dot live forward slash social media. It'll get you inside of our group. Essentially, here's what it is. We have a case study of how we attracted 92,233 leads in 21 days for under 55 cents each. I give you a bunch of free training and support on how to do that. And again, I just want to thank you for doing this again, Scott. I love when you do this every single year. And man, it's just great watching you grow over the last decade plus. It's it's really quite amazing what you've been doing. So I really hey, appreciate you, being here. Thank you. Hey, you too, buddy. You're the best at what you do. And when I was putting this on, I was like, I got to get Kurt back on. We got we to gotta, we gotta meet more because most of the time we're meeting in other states. and Other, other states, yes. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So, well, hey, brother, be safe down there in South Austin, Georgia. You're, you're the birdcage. And uh, enjoy the views, and let's grab a, let's grab some tacos before too long here. That huh? would be amazing. That'd be amazing. Because the taco truck that delivered tacos here just went out of business yesterday, so I got to figure oh. that out. Oh, oh, right. that's not. Thanks, taco everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Scott. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Kurt. See you later, buddy.